Tip 1. Unless the person has said or implied otherwise, acknowledge the death of their loved one. We'll give you practical examples of how to do this, later in the video. Acknowledging the loss of someone is the polite, respectful and caring thing to do. Quite often, well-intentioned people avoid the topic because they don't want to make the grieving person upset. Or because they simply don't know what to say. But the grieving person is already sad, because they are grieving. However, on top of this sadness, they may feel hurt, confused and even betrayed that their loved one's passing is being ignored. Not acknowledging the loss can create more pain for the grieving person, and more awkwardness for both of you. Tip 2. Be a listener, not a solver. Offer silence, not advice. You cannot solve or fix grief, so don't even try to. And unless the person specifically asks for it, avoid offering advice. Definitely steer clear of statements like, don't cry, and, it's time to move on. These statements can minimize the person's feelings, and do more harm than good, because you're telling the person how to grieve. In general, grieving people want their grief to be heard and acknowledged. They want their pain and longing to be recognized and validated. So just listen, without any goal or agenda. Tip 3. Avoid awkwardness by being a healing listener, in three ways. To be a healing listener, please do the following. 1. Where possible, put away any distractions like phones or other devices. The person is being open and vulnerable, so if you check texts or make calls, the person can feel sad, ashamed, uncomfortable or awkward. Honor and respect their vulnerability by giving them your undivided attention. 2. Listen with a view to understand and empathize with their situation. This means, listen more and talk less. Don't interrupt them, and unless they ask, or it's vitally beneficial for the person, try not to share your own experiences. This conversation is about their grief and loss. 3. While the person is talking, acknowledge that you're listening by nodding. Where appropriate, you can say things like, I hear you, that sounds really difficult, your feelings are completely valid, it's okay to feel angry, and so on. Tip 3. To avoid awkwardness completely, take the time to truly understand grief. Grief is a response to loss. It's a healthy, healing process, which everyone experiences differently. Grief is a journey, not a destination. Grief also comes in waves, sometimes intensely, sometimes mildly. The more you understand grief, the less awkward you'll feel about having condolence conversations. Here's a sample condolence conversation. Please keep in mind, a condolence conversation can play out in literally thousands of ways. Every condolence conversation will be different. This is just one example. The green background contains your part of the conversation. The purple background contains the grieving person's dialogue. For the purpose of this exercise, you are visiting this person at their home, and their loved one has recently died. Emma, I'm sorry for the loss of Fred. He was such a devoted husband, and he loved you so much. My deepest condolences. Thank you. Emma starts to cry and cannot talk anymore. She apologizes. You have nothing to apologize for. Cry as much as you want, I'll just sit here with you, if that's okay. Emma nods. She cries for a while, and you sit quietly. You are a close friend who has shown her physical affection before, so you sometimes pat her hand or rub her shoulder and say, it's okay, let it all out. Eventually Emma says, I just miss him so much. It's so hard. She outlines all the pain she's feeling, and all the things she misses about Fred, and how the nights are so difficult. As she talks, you nod. There is a silent space at the end of her long piece. It sounds incredibly difficult and painful. I'm happy to listen for as long as you want. Also, is there anything else I can do to help? You mentioned that it's hard to go shopping, so, can I pick up some items for you? I'm okay with all that, it's just the loneliness that's so hard. The house feels so empty. My heart feels like it has been ripped into a million pieces. I'm sad but I'm angry, and I'm hurt that he left me, even though it wasn't his fault. I'm such a horrible person for thinking this way. You're not a horrible person. You're a grieving person, and grief makes you feel so many different emotions all at once. Anything you're feeling is completely valid. I appreciate you being here, and listening. 
Please reach out to me at any time. I am happy to sit here and listen, or to help you in more practical ways, if and when you need it. We hope this video helps you to have a non-awkward condolence conversation. In addition, please know that we have a range of free condolence message e-cards that you can send to people.